Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice equation. We have 2z or 2 not 2z cosine theta minus z squared equals 1. So are we going to be solving for z? Sure. If we were solving for theta that would be pretty easy, right? Let's take a look at it first. So if you're trying to solve for theta, you would try to isolate this first. And that can be done easily if you can go ahead and add z squared to both sides and then divide both sides by 2z, provided that z does not equal 0, right? You would get the following answer. Cosine z, I mean cosine theta equals this, and then if you inverse cosine both sides or arc cosine both sides, theta would be something like arc cosine z squared plus 1 all over 2z or something like that, right? Okay, wait a minute. This looks like such a good idea. And that brings us to the first method. But guess what? We're going to start with the second method. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the second method. And we're going to be solving for solving for z by the way great so let's go ahead and start with the original equation and then put everything on the right hand side because that will give you a quadratic equation so now we can go ahead and use the good old quadratic formula right why not let's use it and this problem or something similar to this i think recently just came up right in another problem do you remember if not go ahead and check it out anyway so from here we get the following solutions by using the quadratic formula negative b in this case you got to remember the way i wrote it is kind of a little bit of misleading so maybe i should fix this allow me to fix it real quick this should better be written as 2 cosine z as the coefficient of z because this equation is basically quadratic in z right so we want to make it that way. So now notice now that this equation is quadratic in z. And now negative b is 2 cosine theta plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 cosine squared theta minus 4ac, which is minus 4, divided by 2a, which is 2. Awesome. Now we're going to do a little bit of work here. To simplify this, we can pull out a 2. And inside, we're going to have cosine squared theta minus 1, which is pretty interesting. And then we can divide everything by 2. And yes, everything. And that gives us the following. Cosine theta plus minus the square root of cosine squared minus theta under the radical. Wait a minute. We didn't simplify that. How do you simplify it? What is cosine squared theta minus 1? Well, I kind of remember 1 minus cosine squared from high school, right? I mean, you probably do too. But what is cosine squared minus 1? It's the opposite. If 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared, cosine squared minus 1 is negative sine squared. Uh-oh, we got a negative number under the radical that calls for complex numbers. And guess what this channel is all about? Complex numbers. So we can now write this as cosine theta plus, uh-oh, now we're going to write this as cosine theta plus minus. Now the square root of this is going to be i sine theta because negative sine squared is negative. Make sense? Great. So this is pretty cool, right? I mean, are you serious? These are the solutions? Absolutely, but let's go ahead and separate them. I'm going to write them as cosine theta plus i sine theta, and you can call that z1 if you want, first solution. And the second solution can be written as cosine theta minus I sine theta and of course the first one can be written as e to the i theta and the second one can be written as e to the negative i theta which are basically the polar forms how nice right cool now let's talk about the first method i saved it for last okay so remember how we got to the first method but we didn't do it it was coming from the idea of solving for theta okay great so we already did. Do you remember what it was? Or at least cosine theta? I hope you do. Because cosine theta from our equation, let me go ahead and copy the original one in case you forgot. 
it's important to write the problem down somewhere right at the beginning of the video so that you can kind of keep track but that's okay uh, I'll be more than happy to remind you what the problem is now from here if you oscillate cosine theta it's going to be z squared plus 1 all over 2z great this is good but remember we're solving for z not theta so we don't really care about theta but there's one thing that's going to help us, and that is cosine theta. Is there a formula for cosine theta? Hmm, let's think about it. Well, I think Euler said something about it, didn't he? Yes, he did say that cosine theta can be written as e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by 2. Because remember, we just talked about it. If you add these two things and divide by 2, obviously you get cosine theta. Come on right and the second one is actually obtained very easily by replacing theta with negative theta because cosine is even and sine is odd whatever that means great now we got this equation forget about theta throw it away okay we don't care right so this is what our focus should be on because our goal is to solve for z how do you solve for z though let's split it up wait a minute i can cancel out the twos nice and then split it up z plus one over z and then split this up as well. I can't. Yes, you can. You can write this as 1 over e to the i theta. Now, by taking a look at this thing, if you didn't get it, take a very good look. Like, take a hard look, okay? Take a picture. You should see it eventually, all right? So, notice that we have a number and it's reciprocal on both sides. Do you see that? So, in other words, if z is e to the i theta, then 1 over z will be 1 over e to the i theta. But wait a minute, this was quadratic, wasn't it? Of course, because z can also be 1 over e to the i theta because the reciprocal of that is e to the i theta. Make sense? The reciprocal of the reciprocal of something is something. So now we get the following results from here. And we'll probably finish with that if I did not include any results from who knows where, right? But I did. Looks like we're going to take a look at something else. But anyways, let's finish this up first. So from here, I'm saying that, okay, z can be e to the i theta or z can be 1 over e to the i theta, which can also be written as e to the negative i theta. And if you want, you can also turn these into cosine theta plus i sine theta or cosine theta minus i sine theta. But the, they are better in this form because they're more compact. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at some results. What Wolfram Alpha gives us? Wolfram Alpha says, Here's the, here's the solutions. Are you serious? We were just talking about our cosine, remember? And of course, the opposite also works because cosine is even. But wait a minute. This is not very helpful. Uh oh. If you actually look, scroll down in Wolfram Alpha, you're going to get the nicer solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.